Now it is my pleasure to introduce David Brooks, one of America's most prominent political commentators. David writes a bi-weekly op-ed column for the New York Times. He's also a regular analyst on NewsHour with Jim Lehrer and National Public Radio's All Things Considered. And David has a gift for bringing audience, audiences face to face with the spirit of our times with humor, insight, and quiet passion. He's a keen observer of the American way of life and a savvy analyst of present day politics and foreign affairs. His newest book is titled The Social Animal, The Hidden Sources of Love, Character, and Achievement. It's a story of how success happens to a fictional American couple. It illustrates a radically new understanding of human nature, what happens in the unconscious mind. David also has written two books of what he calls comic sociology on Paradise Drive, how we live now and always have in the future tense, and the New York Times bestseller, Bobos in Paradise, the new upper class and how they got there. David has worked at the Wall Street Journal and the Weekly Standard, and he's been a contributing editor at Newsweek and the Atlantic Monthly. You also may have read his work in the New Yorker, Forbes, the Washington Post, and many other periodicals. We are honored to have him with us here this evening. Please give a warm welcome to David Brooks. Thank you. I'd like to thank the organizer, organizers for putting my bar mitzvah picture up there. Um, and I'd also like to thank the organizers uh, for the outstanding display earlier tonight of Scandinavian humor. Uh, that's why I come to Minnesota. Uh, some of you may know I married into Minnesota. I was born in New York in a culture which goes by the slogan, uh, think Yiddish, act British. Uh, sort of a left-wing culture. My parents were sort of left-wing. In 1965, they took me to a B-in where hippies would go just to be. And as, as part of their being, they set a garbage can on fire and threw their wallets into it to demonstrate how little they cared about money and material things. And I was five years old, and I saw a $5 bill on fire in the garbage can. So I ran over, reached into the fire, and grabbed the money and ran away, uh, which was sort of my first step over to the right uh, early in life. But uh, sort of stayed on the left for a little while, went to the University of Chicago where fun goes to die. Uh, <laughs> the other slogan about U of C is it's a, if I can get this right, it's a Baptist school where atheist professors teach Jewish students St. Thomas Aquinas. <laughs> uh, and so I marry a woman, or I meet a woman from Minnesota. She's from, uh, she says her family's originally from a town called Detroit Lakes. And I'm from New York, and to me Detroit Lakes sounds like, is it that right next to Newark Meadows? Um, but we fall in love, we get married, I get to come out here and spend many hours hearing people talk about walleyes, uh, Scandinavian humor, Swedish jokes, Norwegian jokes, uh, but marrying a woman from Minnesota, I never uh, have won an argument at home since. Um, her her uh, father was a guy named Tom Hughes who has worked for Orville Freeman, Don Frazier, Walter Mondale, Hubert Humphrey, and so I've gotten developed great admiration for the Minnesota politicians, including the politicians uh, of today. Um, Governor Tim Pawlenty, who was at the dinner for five seconds but decided he should withdraw and left. Um, uh, uh, Senator Franken is not here, but he actually dresses like this on the Senate floor. Uh, and Amy Klobuchar, Senator Klobuchar, I. I'll say it in front of her face, which I say all the time when people ask me uh, who are the rising stars of, the, of, of Washington and the Senate in American politics. I mentioned Senator Klobuchar first and foremost. Um, I mean that. Uh, and that's not only because she's a rising star in the conventional sense, but she's not only a good senator, she's a new kind of senator. Uh, and I think there's not, as far as I can tell, a pompous bone in her body, which separates her from her 99 colleagues. Um, I spend a lot of time around politicians, and uh, most of them are emotional freaks of one sort or another. Uh, they have what I call logaria dementia, which means they talk so much they drive themselves insane. Uh, 
Uh, many of them will invade your personal space. Uh, they'll grab your lapels, the back of your head, uh, stroke your cheek while they talk to you. Actually, here I was here for the convention in, in the Twin Cities, and I sat next to a senator who kept his hand on my inner thigh the whole meal, <laughs> squeezing it for emphasis. Uh, they have amazing social skills. <laughs> Actually, I was uh, following Mitt Romney last election cycle up. He was campaigning in New Hampshire uh, with his five perfect sons, Bip, Chip, Rip, Sip, Dip, Lemon, Skip. Um, and he goes into a diner, uh, and he goes to each table at each family at the diner, and he introduces himself and asks what village in New Hampshire they're from, and then he describes the home he owns in their village. Uh, and so he's going around, he meets like 40 people, uh, and on the way out, he first names everybody he's just met. And so that is impressive uh, social skills. Uh, and so I, I greatly admire the politicians who serve our country. Uh, and it's a thrill to be here where the politicians have, have come together with business leaders, or as the Occupy Wall Street folks call it, one-stop shopping. <laughs>